Recovery from the financial crisis of 2008 takes more than a decade. International relations become strained during this time. Following the first global energy crisis, competing industrialized nations invest heavily in developing countries in exchange for exclusive access to energy sources and raw materials. Regional trading blocks emerge. Trade flourishes within these blocks but is diminished between them. In the North American bloc, domestic manufacturing and the seamless exchange of resources establish a strong economic cluster, inspiring regional pride and a sense of purpose shared by millions. Energy prices are high, but stable. The goal of self-sufficiency is closer than ever. This is the world of Neftastique on November 2nd, 2037. Good evening, North America. You are watching the primetime U.S. edition of North America News. Today, the presidents of Mexico and the United States and the Prime Minister of Canada, along with other high-level officials from other administrations, gathered in Toronto to mark the 10th anniversary of the North America Economic Community. Their guest of honor was former U.S. President Michael Castillo, the first U.S. President of Hispanic descent and the man responsible for the creation of the United Front between the U.S., Mexico, and Canada. In a speech today, Mr. Castillo reflected upon what he calls a decade of achievements. Together, we've built a strong relationship between Mexico, Canada, and the United States, proving all of our detractors wrong. I believe that the nations of North America share a common destiny. Today, young workers move freely to reach the lands and factories that need them. Today, all three nations responsibly share the energy and resources that bless this land. Today, the ideas of a young innovator from Oaxaca can quickly catch the attention of investors in New York and be brought to fruition by engineers in Quebec. Castillo's successor, William Strong, presented what he described as the next logical step, a consolidation within the next decade of a true North American Union, a political and economic supranational entity similar to the European Union. This would include a full-fledged North American Parliament and a rotating presidency, as well as a common currency tentatively called the Amerigo. Today's presence in Toronto of the presidents of most Central American nations is seen by many political analysts as an indication of interest on the part of these nations to join the North American economic community. Whether other members will be admitted remains uncertain. Let's see what our correspondent in Toronto has to say. Amy, what is your impression of what is happening in Toronto right now? Thanks, Jennifer, and good evening, North America. The weather here in Toronto has been perfect for today's event. It seems that there's a general atmosphere of celebration and agreement on all parts. Amy, can you give us a little more information about the event? Sure, Jennifer. The Mexican president, Alejandro Gonzalez, focused his remarks on the importance of a relaxed immigration policy, taking the opportunity to announce that the frictions between the United States and Mexico have been greatly reduced over the last 20 years. His Canadian counterpart, Jacques Moreau, underlined how far the three countries have gone in terms of natural resources management. He actually predicted that we'll achieve self-sufficiency for the North American economic community in the next five years. This is very exciting, Amy. Thank you. Stay with us after 10 p.m. when Amy and her team bring us their exclusive live report from Toronto, tonight on North America News. Now let's visit with our senior policy correspondent, Helen Palmer. She has an exclusive interview with Professor Alan Gorko, last year's recipient of the Nobel Prize in Economics. Helen? Hi, Jennifer. Yes, we are fortunate to be Professor Allen's guest tonight. He has agreed to discuss with us the current state of events. Yes, Helen, darling. First of all, I need to express how happy I am to be here today. This is an historic moment, and I'm absolutely delighted to be a part of it. So, let's begin with some history. How did things come to be the way they are today? Well, we were forced to take the current path after 2017 when a number of resource-rich African countries aligned themselves with China, establishing the first trading bloc that operated independently of the West. 
This, in turn, created a general atmosphere of diplomatic confusion, pressuring other nations to form their own blocs, and thus marking the end of the global trade era. Well, the only reasonable strategy for the United States to pursue was to find suitable partners and strengthen a self-sustaining relationship with them. In your last book, you have a chapter where you discuss the lost stream of global economy, where you present ideas that seem to have inspired an emerging feeling of nostalgia for globalization used by critics against the New World Order. How can you miss globalization and advocate for self-sufficiency all at the same time? This conversation is heating up. Don't miss the rest of this interview at 10.30 p.m. Central at North America News. We'll come back from commercials with revealing information about the North American Energy Pipeline Project, covering everything from Anchorage to Halifax to Panama City. It will be sure to change your life. Stay tuned.